Lawrence. Uh, today is Wednesday, April 4th, 2018. We're in uh, San Jose dos Campos, Brazil, with Graham Webb from Pratt & Whitney here at the uh, first delivery of the e e E190 E2. Uh, Graham, thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the maturity of the uh, of the GTF engine now that you're entering your, your third different airframe? Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's really um, for us as this is the third operator. Uh, we have you know, over 600,000 hours of operation on our gear turbofan engine fleet. Uh, Wittero, who will be the first launch operator of the E190 E2, that will be powered by the PW1900G engine variant, uh, which will have all of the maturity, all of the learning that we've obtained from both the PW1100G JM, which powers the NEO aircraft, the Airbus NEO aircraft, as well as the um, PW1500G that powers the C-Series. And I will highlight that that engine for the C-Series is extremely similar to that of the Embraer 190 2 engine. So all of the learning, all the maturity, all the fixes uh, will be embedded within their engines and we're anticipating that they will have a very smooth entry into service. Well, that's uh, that's great. Generally, we consider an engine mature at about a million flight hours. Yeah. How, how's, how's the total GTF fleet doing so far? Well, you know, obviously it's been in the press. You guys have been very good following us in terms of some of the issues we faced, and we've got through them. We have a roadmap. Uh, all of the fixes are either incorporated now in the case of the, the, the PW1100G JM engine, or will be soon to be incorporated in the case of the PW1500G and the PW1900G. So that would include the, the seal issues, the combustion issues and all of the other known issues that have been uh, identified. So we're looking forward to having smoother times and uh, better operation, uh, particularly with Wittero, who will launch customer of the, of the 192. Mm -hmm. The performance on the engine has actually come out a little better than planned, it, uh, it appears, given the additional fuel burn and the uh, beating the noise requirements. Uh, it seems like a queen's clean sweep across the board. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the big numbers, the ones that, you know, we like to tout, the performance has been phenomenal, it's been, a, a, we'd say, at or ahead of spec. Um, the noise, as you've indicated, is, is better, and the emissions as well. So, across the board, uh, we've met all of our key performance requirements for the engine. We don't have to do performance upgrades. Uh, the engines are performing well. We're fixing these minor issues that we've probably experienced in the initial uh, entry into service times, and, and now we're off and running with our third customer, uh, Embraer, having delivered their first aircraft to Quitter. That's, uh, that's great. In terms of the future, uh, can we look for some performance upgrades, even though you don't need them to beat your spec? Obviously, you, you guys try to keep competitive and one step ahead of your competitor. What can we expect from the GTF in the future? Well, like all of the engine operators and the aircraft operators, we're continuously evaluating the market competitiveness and what's required for us to maintain competitiveness. And so um, we're always actively evolving our technology programs. Uh, we don't have anything specifically planned for this lines of engines currently, but over time that will change as we see the market dynamics develop. Thanks for being with us today, Greg. Thank you, Eric.